Und damit ein herzliches Willkommen und hallo zur weiteren Part Let's Play Fake Grand Order. Ich bin es immer Fix. Ja, beim letzten Mal sind wir hier in das White Space weiter geschwommen. Doch unglücklicherweise, liebe Leute, ist dieses seltsame Tic Tac Toe Feld immer noch leer. Und es sah auch nicht so aus, als hätten wir eine Chance, da wirklich durchzukommen. Doch glücklicherweise. Oh, ich muss mal kurz schauen. Oh, Leute, wer muss ja noch mal eine Weekly Quest machen? Ähm, doch glücklicherweise kam mir hier eine äh, wunderhübsche Dame die ich auch bald grain werde, nämlich in der Form von Yang, die uns hier geholfen hat. Und äh, das war unser, unsere Foreigner-Dame, haben wir hier beschworen und diese hat uns hier geholfen, die Gegner zu besiegen. Dabei haben wir noch einen weiteren Foreigner gefunden, der hier außerhalb äh, des Schiffes war, im Void Space. Und zwar Van Gogh. Orlands! It's been five hours since the rescue operation. So far, there have been no further enemy attacks. Your course of action turned out to be correct. Acting Commander Yang Gefei has been a huge help and the person we rescue is assisting us now too. Despite how hopeless things seemed before, I think we're finally seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. Hmm, stop it, Captain. You're going to make me blush. Thank you, Odo. I keep doing my best there to be your eyes and ears. By the way, would it be possible for me to work outside the ship too? How did uh, you make it so you can also be my good uh, do that, Lady Goddess? Well, the sims that our ally from the moon sent us was embedded with this. I believe it called memory chip. Ah, oh, patentiertes BB ware. Now the mysterious spell burned into it that it appears to be, if not a void magecraft, then uh, something similar. When the ship is installed into the spirit ocean closing, It makes the world compatible with void space. Additionally, it improves the physical capabilities. However, the only summons who can uh, make use of these outfits are those who possess Simsuit uh, spirit origin or who have otherwise acquired a Simsuit in the past. Unfortunately, only such a uh, spirit here are also capable of Mesh and I. Well, name was Simsuit 1. <laughs> I'm sorry, but it was simply t too soon for me to wear one. Still, if I were able to summon any other Simso capable servants at some point, I can ensure their clothing is similar or it's best compatible. Also im Endeffekt ist es einfach nur Wasser. I may not know much about the modern day electronics, but I can still duplicate the entire ship with my room magecraft. Well, things from the engine room ain't looking great. We've been lucky enough to avoid the critical damage, but the drive train is still a mess since we ran aground. We need to get a uh, dry lock at even uh, doing something about our crazy fuel sufficient and uh, that uh, loud as shit engine rattling our head in. And since we lost a whole ton of fuel, best not to expect any rapid maneuvers or speed changes anytime soon. We got uh, beds up for everyone in the crew apartment. Means right to be a little basic though. Most of our food supply was lost long with the fuel. So we're afraid the servant we are all gonna have to make do with just the magic energy for a while. But hey, aside from that, everything's fine. We're really happy uh, we've got uh, so many guests. Thanks everyone. Then with that out of the way, let's talk about our biggest problem. Well, mystery, really. I'm speaking of course of Van Gogh. Is she really there, Vincent Van Gogh? And is she really on our side? Well, I tested a simple of our blood. On the Magecraft side of things, a spirited body is circulating an unusual kind either at the very at the high densities. Some blood is already fairly different from standard blood, since it's homeostatic magic energy meant to keep the cell and spirit ocean working. But Van Gogh, blood appears to be a step removed even from that. While we're still waiting for Professor to conduct the examination, I can still that the Van Gogh's spiral composition and reactions are a similar type of Uh, plant based elixir. She may be a rogue spirit using a non human body like a special kind of homunculus or a vessel. By the way, the reason I've been here uh, using female pronouns for her is because, the least medical speaking, she's 100% well female. Hmm, well, that is not unusual. That sort of thing happens to Kaldea quite frequently, does it not? Just because there are precedent for it doesn't mean it's just not significant. Hasn't there always been a clear reason for why servants have materials as a gender other than the one they are generally known to have been? Yeah, uh, the waifu factor. <laughs> yes, there has. 
There have been uh, cases where a rogue spirit legend was lost or altered, like with Altria and Raikou. Otherwise we are summoned as part of a unit like Hokusai. And then there's Musashi, her circumstances are entirely unique. I don't see a Musashi, but a common thread among them were all that they are from time periods with uh, very few reliable records. But Vincent van Gogh was a world famous painter from 19th century Holland and France. We have ample historical records including his own self portrait and even a few photographs to confirm he was male. Well, what did she have to say about herself? You talked to her a bit, right, Master? Well... <laughs> you want to know what I was like when I was alive? Oh gosh, that's embarrassing. My life really wasn't all that special. I couldn't hack it as a Vila says personal missionary, so I just mooch off my parents and my little brother. Here and spent all of my time painting pictures I had never sold. There were lots of painting I would love to be friends with, but my attempt to uh, befriend uh, Gaugin was kind of a disaster. After that, I am um, kind of fell into a funk and ultimately, well, that's just all abgeschnitten. I put a gun in my chest out in the little village of our sir, I say. <laughs> I never would have dreamed. Then my paintings uh, would be so popular a whole century later. <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't help but smile about it. Was there anyone I loved? Of course, uh, there was. <laughs> yeah, you might hear the thanks to a famous court and Chien. Hmm? Yes, they were women. Same sex relationships? What are you talking about? I'm a woman. And Ki was a. Uh huh? That's in Kutschlos. <laughs> what are you talking about again? Yeah, definitely in Kutschlos. I still definitely lined up with the historic Van Gogh, but... Right, the details she shared uh, do line perfectly with her records of Vincent Van Gogh's life. But then there are the grave contradictions her gender brings up considering when Van Gogh lived. For example, the fact that Vincent is a male name, or the fact that it is a combination with Paul Gauguin, would have been a tremendous scandal back then if she had been a woman. And then there are all uh, of her relationship troubles that the database list, all those all involves other women too. I don't feel she's this line to us, but she definitely seems to be a little mixed up about her memories. That said, she does seem to fully cognize of the fact that she's a woman. She could be from a parallel world uh, where she lived a similar life to her Van Gogh. Is that the case? I can think of three possibilities. One, she's an unrelated person who truly believes she's Vincent van Gogh. Two, she's van Gogh, but her gender and memories are scrambled by his production, abnormality. And three, she's actually an enemy who's lying about uh, being Vincent van Gogh. What do you think, Master? All I know for sure, she's been extremely friendly ever since we rescued her. Nein, sie hat nur das schon. No way, Hoka says my resilience says two. <laughs> really? <laughs> I'd love to meet her. I'm a huge fan of Japan. In fact, Japanese artists were a huge influence on my work. I don't know much about the foreigner stuff, but if you form a contract with me, I'd gladly do anything I can to help. <laughs> it's a little worrying that she doesn't seem to realize she's a foreigner, but at least she's not hostile. Right. In the meantime, whether she is the real Van Gogh or not, she's already shared some valuable information about what's with us. I'm still analyzing what she has given us, but at this point it looks like we are about 99% uh, accurate. My hypothesis is that she was essentially born knowing things about white space by virtue of having materialized here. What's more, she's obviously already proven that she can move about white space freely even without a compatibility chip. So we can say for sure that she possesses protection. Uh, Pertaining to the sea, that at least the strongest ours. Uh, Nemos? Given those abilities as well as the information she's given us, it seems like she could be a valuable asset in the battle. Since she's a servant, that decision is entirely up to you, Master. You're in charge of the ship now, after all. What do you want to do? Sie ist Torpedo rausschicken! Sie ist Torpedo rausschicken! Über die Planke! Ich will einfach nur mal mein Captain Ding, äh, uh, mein Captain-mäßiges hier ein bisschen ausleben. I've got to form a temporary contract with it. 
Was heißt der Tempo der Leute, Mann? Wir haben sie, Baby. I see you meant it's made up. Was das die Turtle Shell ist hart, Master. Uh, oops, I guess I kind of sounded like Captain Nemo out there, didn't I? For future artists, you might try to see Snake's tooth. Very tough. Those are uh, bad, but I regress. A temporary contract, huh? Understood. We should be able to scourge up enough rescue to keep uh, one more server. But that being said, everyone would you mind excusing us for a bit? I like to talk to acting commander private. I'm afraid that goes for you too, acting vice commander. I'd also like to ask your stand guard to make sure nobody else ever hears us. Oh, well, this must be really important. Alright, understood. Good, Professor, put them on audio jamming bound of here for us. So not even Yang Gefei should be able to overhear. Alright, Master. What I'm about to tell you is a little while sensitive. But if I'm going to serve you properly, I think you should know. I think I might know who that servant really is. Uh oh. Uh, that damn field is causing so much static I can't hear a thing. I wish I knew what there was a ta we're talking about. Aren't you curious, Your Excellency, by acting Vice Commander Kirillite? Oh, the title. Just Mesh is fine, please. Okay then, Mesh, what do you think? Uh, Captain and Master are talking about uh, all by themselves. I think they're probably discussing some very fine particulars of the operation. So it makes sense, they want to keep things confidential. I see, yeah, I guess you're right. Oh well, what can you do to... Politics is always ridiculously complicated, hardness, no matter the issue or the area. So instead of a daily pressing stuff like that, I'd much rather talk about something exciting like a romance. Tell me, what do you make of those two prospects? Huh? I think Captain Nemo and Master um, involved? I have no proof, of course. But does an idea for Commander abusing her authority to have a private TTT with her submarines just to uh, sound dreamy? N no, no, it doesn't. Hi hey guys, you look like you were talking, uh, taking a break, so I brought you some drinks. Thank you, it looks delicious. Oh wow, the taste is so hot. Is this modern alcohol? It sure does, that's a cocktail called a deep depth charge. Don't worry, these are non-alcoholic. The captain loves to chuck these down when uh, nobody else is around. How, how? What a lovely drink that everyone can enjoy. How about you, Mish? Do you like it? It's, it's terrible. If I drink anything called a cocktail, I... I... Wow! I don't think I've ever seen anyone be so affected by um, non-alcoholic stuff so quickly. Your face is a finger speed. My heart rate and blood pressure are rising rapidly. Rational uh, faculties declining. <laughs> oh no, if I don't do something soon, I'll be overcome with a rush to burst into the bridge and grill master with questions. Oh, Mashi. I need to shut myself down immediately. If not soon, a button. Button! Where's the button? <laughs> Look at this. I was looking through the storeroom and happened to find the self destruct switch. <laughs> she uncertainly has a sense of humor, including something like this and among her. Perfect! Thank you. Mesh out. Click. Ah! Und das war unser Abenteuer. Ha, what was that? This is the backup computer room. Someone just activated the self-destruct device we made for April Fools. W wieso baut man <laughs> mit einem Brillenscherz einen Selbstzerstörungskopf? Why would you even make something like that? I told Jean it was a bad idea. But she insisted it would be harmless. What the damage, Marine? Ah! Everyone hair has burned too crisp. But otherwise we're fine. How can you call this fine? I'm going to fix my poor hair. <laughs> oh, my ears. Uh, wait, this ringing isn't from the explosion. Uh, okay, everyone. Can the comic relief? Can the comic relief? There's a ton of enemies headed our way. Ich verstehe den Satz gerade. Okay, uh, okay, jeder hier. Uh, an alle. Uh, uh, ach, egal. Ach so, can. Ah, uh, okay, passt. Uh, also, tütet, uh, vergesst den, uh, den, den Witz hier. So, passt. What? I'm here to jab. I forgot to mention this earlier, but voice sea monsters are actually really a sensitive to sound. So if you want to survive out here, you really shouldn't make any loud noises. <laughs> Sorry, I laugh when I'm nervous. Alright, 
Which of us is ready to deploy? Mesh has fainted. Osakabe is missing. Damn, she must have run away. Very well. I shall just have to go out there again myself. Marines, bring me the strongest liquor you've got. It might help to forget my shame. <laughs> and if you do her with that, I still can send only one servant out there alone. Hmm, very well then. How about this? Oh, yeah, what's going on? Why did my outfit change all of a sudden? I'm better avoid with competitive spell in your clothing. It is a little rough since you have yet to undergo an ascension, but it should be enough to operate at such a ship. Really? Sexy! With the new ascension fun? I can help outside the ship too. Also is this on sich a swimsuit? Emma, uh, uh, I'd like to go outside as well. Huh? You would? I sure you can. Uh, yeah, I'm already comfortable with void space. And my bros is itching for some action, so... <laughs> Would it be okay if you if we formed a contract, Lord Maxi? <laughs> Probably not, uh, I never could attract any patrons. I trust this is okay with you, Captain? Contracts are our domain master. But if we didn't do it, uh, uh, if I can tell you if you had any objections to her joining our crew, I'd have voiced them before we risk it here. Vincent Van Gogh? Yes. You've got a contract. Wow! Wow! This is awesome! I promise I do my best. Okay, Leute. Heißt es, ich kann jetzt Yang, Koch und Skadi nehmen. Endlich mal! Also, nix gegen Maschi, Ich meine, Drunk Mesh ist best Maschi. Aber das sind Teams, die ich nehmen will, Mann. Nicht hier irgendwie Stall Mesh Teams, Mann. Okay, liebe Leute. Wieso muss du diesen Knopf drücken, Mesh? Leute, seit diesem Moment ist klar, Skadi hat ein Toupee. Das sind nicht ihre wahren Haare. <lacht> ich bin mir ganz sicher, es ist so, liebe Leute. So, also wir haben jetzt hier ein sehr interessantes Team. Oh, leider. Schade, dass wir nicht die richtige Skade wieder haben. Ich überlege gerade, wie wir das am besten machen. Eigentlich ist es wurscht. So, und dann... Ich überlege nur, ob wir das auf sie oder auf... Naja, wir machen das. So, also Leute, ihr seht, äh, Goff ein unglaublich interessanter Servant, ähm, mit seinem Curse, äh, mit ihrem Curse, ich sag immer eher, äh, und ein, äh, toller Buffer für Fred Humanity Gegner und, äh, da gut die gute Yang natürlich ein Fred Humanity Gegner ist, wird es umso besser, ist schön, dass auch Yang hat schon ihr Upgrade bekommen, das heißt, alle Gegner taunten hier, und ihr seht, dann haben sie alle Burndown hier, was natürlich mega cool ist, und Apropos, was mega cool ist, Ihre Animation, liebe Leute. Äh, uh, so viel zu sprechen, liebe Leute. Ähm, um, also reden wir, bleiben wir erstmal bei Goch, würde ich mal sagen. Oh, kein einziger Crit. Äh, uh, Goch hier, wie gesagt, als... Greift jetzt mal Goch an. Alter, greift Goch an. Dankeschön. Äh, uh, ein Curse-Gimmick, was wir jetzt auch gleich zu sehen bekommen. Und zwar ein mega interessantes Curse-Gimmick. I cannot use the Urban Phantasm. Okay, dann halt nicht. Kannst du mich gerne am Spiel. Hahaha, <lacht> 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 nein, so gut. Mir ärgert es, dass ich jetzt meine Pier nicht nutzen kann. Geh mit deinen glitschigen Tentakel von meiner Tentakel Queen weg, Mann, das geht ja gar nicht. Ähm, dann kommen wir zu Van Gogh, würde ich mal sagen, erst später. Dann gehen wir erstmal hier auf äh, Yang ein. Äh, Yang äh, ein, hat den Burn-Gimmick. Ähm, das heißt, äh, wenn Gegner brennen, dann äh, macht sie ihnen zusätzlichen Schaden. Äh, und zwar einen ziemlich guten Damage-Multiplikator hat sie. Ich glaube, 150, also sehr stark. Ähm, der Vorteil an diesem Skill ist halt, dass sie äh, mit ihrem dritten Skill die Gegner taunten. Also mit ihrem ersten Skill kann sie die Gegner taunten. Und mit ihrem... Und äh, mit ihrem ähm, dritten Skill ist es so, wenn man sie angreift, dass die Gegner einen Burn bekommen. 
打ちかかり手はことびきましょう全勝運気よくねえ Eternal Love, liebe Leute, das ist richtige Liebe. Naja, und wir sind aktuell noch in der Beta-Phase. Fast so schlecht wie der JP, aber wir haben aktuell keine Kommas bei den Zahlen. Ähm, und ja, also es ist sehr leicht mit ihr die Gegner dazu zu bringen, dass sie hier äh, burnen. Und äh, ihr zweites Gehör ist auch sehr geil, ein äh, 30% Detector müsste es sein und ein AOE Charge Drain, der dann auch das MP, äh, was sie eben absorbiert hat, ihr selbst gibt. Mega gut. <lacht> Also hat sie ja auch eine starke MP-Batterie. Also alles, was das Herz begehrt, würde ich mal sagen. So, kochst du nicht mehr das Gizmo wieder nachgeladen, Mann. Geht doch mal wieder was. Dankeschön. Äh, drei Gegner noch. Okay. Den da. Bringt zwar nicht, aber egal. So. Der Quid, der sitzt. Der sitzt, nein, der sitzt nicht. Leider. Und äh, ja, wie gesagt, äh, ein sehr schönes Arzt-Kit. Ähm, mit allein diesem Taunt, äh, der inzwischen ja auf alle Gegner funktioniert. Das war ja anfangs nicht so. Ähm, und dafür sorgt, dass, also wie gesagt, jeder Gegner sie angreift. Das ist echt ein mega guter Skill. Das beenden wir jetzt in der Runde. Ähm, das ist so ein mega gutes Skill, weil es, es sorgt halt dafür, dass die ganze Party einen zusätzlichen Zug bekommt. Und dazu hat sie, äh, kann sie sehr gut, ist ein netter Crit Servant. Äh, ich finde, äh, sie persönlich profitiert so mega mäßig dann nochmal von, ähm, Proto Merlin. Also, ich hatte bis jetzt sehr viel Spaß mit ihr zu spielen und Leute, ihr Kleid wird immer kürzer und ihre Beine werden gefühlt immer länger, liebe Leute. Ah, Leute, Mann. Sorgt nicht dafür, dass ich noch auf MP Dry roll. <lacht> so, äh, zumindest äh, Top Servant, liebe Leute. All hail to How How. Hooray, we won! <coughs> I knew I could kick butt in combat. And I have to say, when Goch, you can, uh, you and I fight well together, really well together. Ja, ähm, theoretisch hat Goch ja noch einen Buff mit den Fred Humanity Gegners stärkt und jeder Foreigner ist es ja. You're amazing, Van Goch. Say, would you mind if I called you Gochi? Gochi! <laughs> This is great. I always wanted to try to collaborating with an artist from a different culture. <laughs> ah, I knew it. I cannot abide the shame, so I must find Osaka and track her for minding whatever it takes. White Betty ran away. Rezi had a hard hour on it. She must have caught on the tactic I was about to suggest. What tactic? We sent her out to perform a reconsist by firing her out of a torpedo tube. <lacht> Sehr guter Plan, liebe Leute. Finde ich super, Mann. Ballert unser Kamei mir ab. <lacht> Irgendwie steht sie da, glaube ich, nicht so positiv dazu, oder? Hallo? Haben wir jetzt unser Kamei mir getötet? Möglich. Leute, unser Kamei mir ist down. Unser Kabinim ist definitiv... Hey Leute, mir fällt gerade auf, das ist ja Act 1. Das ist ja erste Teil 1, liebe Leute. Ich glaube, wir werden diesen Akt nie beenden. Okay. Ballert unser Kabinim weg, Mann. Das gefällt mir. No. I captured the Serta Captain. This should make up for my crime of somehow inheriting the acting vice commander by giving her an unlikely cocktail, right? Good work, Maureen. But now it doesn't. You the other marine. Have the culprit write a formal apology after tickling his armpits for 600 seconds. Aye aye sir. I tickled the uh, heck out of him. Uh, save me. <laughs> Sind aber gute Strafen. Alright, returning to meta. If Osaka Beam is serving as the focus of her groundbreaking sonar substitute. Yeah. <laughs> around. Would you all mind explaining how it will work? As has been so recently demonstrated, white space is overrun with vicious monsters that are sensitive to sound. Excuse me, teacher, the acting commander is already lost. Allow me then. Allow me then. Just to, uh, there's no confusion. It's best if you think of the white space here now as something completely different from the original white space. 
You see, the idea that white space was always full of dangerous reefs and uh, monsters is simply too divergent from the current theories in Magecraft. With the information we have now, we most likely explaining is someone tempered with this white space to make it observable, then scattered reefs and monsters all through it. While I am curious as to what that someone can do and what their goal might be, it's uh, not uh, relevant to our current predicament. More importantly is the fact that these monsters are sensitive. The sound uh, would seem to indicate that they are well acclimated to this new world's best characteristics. Das heißt, wir schießen unsere KPI mehr einfach in die andere Ecke dieses Wesens und dann stürzen sich alle auf sie. Ist doch ein tolle Idee, Mann. Und wir fliehen. Uh, it's like there are no little chaos here divided itself into waters. We have arch and monsters of Logos. Hmm. This one explanation may not be entirely clear, this, so I elaborate. Whatever the originally occupied void space seems to have split into two clear types of entities. That's our ability to observe void space now. If we had to give a void space to a painter's piddle, both the monsters and the reefs would be made up of thick paint and the rainbow light that now perhaps this void space would be made of up to thin paint. The rainbow light is dangerous, so much as that just viewing it with the naked eyes is risky. But it also possesses other notable characteristic. I've been referring to it as light, but that's just for simplicity's sake. It isn't actually light. It's luminescence. It's entire leisure which is it doesn't illuminate or anything. It refuses to let our retinas uh, retain the true image, like Miss Yang face said, this place is essentially pitch black. If anything, the rainbow light we are seeing now, the thin paint, if you will, is more like water in its consistency. So although it has the same low density as air, it also swells, leaks and vibrates like water, which means it's very good to uh, carrying around. The last expense why these uh, void monsters are more sensitive to sound than light seems reasonable. So using the propellers and engaging a comet to say nothing a uh, absurd commotion of a moment ago will all attract enemies. I'm sorry, Aaron. I'm so sorry. It's okay, Mesh. Go rest up and um, fill you in later. Sauf dich zu, Mesh! Drunk Mesh is best Mesh. So basically, this is uh, pure submarine warfare. We are stuck in the deep uh, sea devoid of light. And we basically have to uh, find our enemies by sound alone, without making any noise that would give away our own position. Unfortunately, it also means we are incredibly disadvantaged in numerous ways. First and foremost, with the Nautilus in the current shape, even starting the engine could make enough sound to trigger an attack. Second, the enemies seem to generally lie mobile and only attack uh, when they notice us. That's for sure. I was drifting here here for a long time and hey, they didn't do anything to me. And if you make it sound to anything uh, from our little guys who just attacked us to things bigger than this entire ship, we'll be on uh, us like a painted canvas. <laughs> It must have been a large enemies that we are blasting us with noble phantasm level attacks, though we still don't know exactly what those attacks were. At any rate, we know there are a lot of them there of us. They've got us around it and they are just key waiting for us to make a sound so they can find and attack us. Meanwhile, with our radar out of commission, Yenge face hearing is all we have to guide us. And with the enemy not making any sounds of their own, we have no choice but to do our do this ourselves. You mean like active sonar? Is there not a sound to determine our enemy's position by how long it was takes uh, to bounce back? That would be really uh, dangerous. Right. If we were to do that right now, it would obviously draw the enemy's attention. So that option is off the table. Which is where Osaka comes in. Her born of field noble phantasm and the divination she uses to prepare for it are really quite remarkable. In essence, she performs a fairly wide area curse-based scan to distinguish 
friend in foes uh, before firing a noble phantasm. It's like a third uh, eye that relies on either sound or sight. With the ability, we can locate our enemies while remaining completely quiet. It is an uh, ideal solution. But to do that, we are gonna shoot me out of the White Sea all by myself, right? Uh, that's way too excited. I mean, dangerous for my blood. Of course, we are not going to send you out there by yourself without any way to back get back. It'll just look like we were. Oh crap, no, Captain's actually thinking about doing it. No, I don't want us to die. You're a survival game expert, yes? Then you must understand how important r Reckon is. Uh, well, I do get it. I guess just uh, hope for a um, indoor option. I see. I do my best to make that happen. Now what's the radius on the bound of field scale? Um, let's see. It extends about to Imiji Castle in a moat. It's about 600 meters or so. It looks like uh, the naval charge and you left us first. At least uh, 100 square kilometers. Damn it. There's nowhere to run. At least make sure everybody get back safe. And I'll reward if I pull this off. Onigashi, please, Matsan. If you pull this off, you can use one of my command spells any way you like. Reverse command spell! Play? I did not even know that was a thing. Uh, must I you sure it's safe to give us a game with that much freedom? It's okay, I'm pretty sure she won't use it for anything too evil. Na, außer Himiji Castle wieder zu beschwören <laughs> und uns alle da wieder reinzustecken. Kennen wir schon. Are you sure? Remember, I once remembered a pretty bad scoop. I a lot of Chisets Pyramid Himiji Castle. Ja, da habe ich mich drüber dran erinnert. Okay, Captain. If this means I get to uh, do anything I won't take it, recommend spell, well, Matsan, then I do it. Bis dahin haben wir schon keine Befehlszauber mehr. Das ist mein Plan, liebe Leute. Ich aktiviere alle und sage, tut mir leid, Betty. Great, the text care of the Sona substitute. Now our ultimate objective is to reach escape point General Jean Yu laid out for us, and our immediate goal is to seize control of every region along the way. Professor already come up with the route and identified four areas that we'll need to pass through on our way to our goal. Until we can ensure our region is safe, we have the Nautilus remain on standby, as is peripheral and sent Osakabime out to a probed area. Once she's determined the enemy is location, we have here Van Gogh and Younger Face swim over and eliminate them in close quarter combat. Okay, whether it be a uh, to see or fight, you can count on you, you to help. I'll do my best to. <laughs> Active Vice Commander Mesh, you remain on board as our last defense against the extremely dangerous attack uh, we may face. Skark Skadi, I'd like you to work with Professor as our head of engineering. Is that alright with you too? Of course, I do whatever it takes to restore my honor. That is all right with me too. But you're sure we have the time it will take to enact the plan. As I recall, we only have enough fuel for a hundred or so more hours. You're right. But we don't have uh, any other choice uh, for this time being. We just have to keep working on repairs and try to think of a better plan as we go. Let's start with the region we are in right now. For better or worse, this area is fairly narrow, so it should be ideal to determine whether our strategy is viable. Once we finished uh, sweeping the area for enemies, we see how much energy we used and um, who's tugging on my sleeve? Uh, Captain, Captain, why does everyone here look like the Grand Army about to go up against General Winter? You know, that's a perfect analogy. The fact is, we are running low on resources. So we are having to power through this empty stomach. Huh? Does that mean we don't have any food? That's right. We don't have nearly enough food for most importantly magic energy. Why we add it? We also don't have enough metal or chemical substance for all the repairs we need. Uh, uh, I don't know anything about ship repairs, but I think we might be fine when it comes to food and magic energy. What do you mean? I can just eat the Logos monsters like I did when I was drifting around. <laughs> Ah, Lekka. She's right. It turns out that the avoid enemy is heavily defeated can be uh, present in a high purity magic energy and food. So from here, the combat team will also officially double as the resource permanence team. Alright, acting commander, give the order. 
Codename Imaginary Scramble. Okay, run. Let's get our first sortie started. No! Oh, stop it already. You're something I forgot as yourself, right? Start acting like it. But nobody told me I was gonna be tethered to the ship with monsters and sand disease. It's alright. The guts we collected from the large enemy are more than strong enough to serve as a lifeline. In fact, we may be even able to these parts of repair to the ship. Be proud, Osakabe. The Nautilus fate is in your hands. <laughs> What's so funny? Admit it. You're enjoying this, aren't you? You bucker sadist goddess! Und das war das letzte Mal, dass wir Usakabe hier gesehen haben. Mir gefällt Commander Herr äh, Jägenmann. Die, die räumt auf, liebe Leute. Aber kann man echt diese Monster essen? Weiß ich nicht so ganz. So. Oh, schön. Ich nehme aber auch gerne Quartz. Okay, keine Quartz. Na gut, dann halt nicht. Die Hoffnung war da. Tigime Battalion has added to a request backup. Aha. Select the area you would like to scan. Select the zone and use uh, resources you've collected to scan the void there. Investigate the select area and its surroundings. Areas with treasure will be surrounded by a faint ripple. Investigate this ripple for a chance for treasure. As you investigate, your zone may detect enemy shadows. Be aware you will not be able to select the uh, areas behind enemy shadow scans, okay? Und dann kann man an denen vorbei. Okay, okay, okay. Also, bis auf die Schiffe versinken. Investigate the Void Space and clear Void uh, Sea Survey Quest to collect Void Survey Points. Increase the Void Survey to go for God. Fill the Void Sea uh, Survey God to unlock a new main quest. Uh -huh. Expand the resources to call for backup, which will apply a special effect uh, the enemy's allies. The effect will change depending on the ally you selected when it comes first to party. Okay, good. Da wir jetzt endlich unser Kabine irgendwo hinschießen. Stirb unser Kabine! Bam! Osakami ist offiziell tot. So. Und das sollten wir gerade noch so schaffen. Eine Kiste sammeln. So. Okay, liebe Leute. Dann haben wir das doch sehr gut gemacht. Was, was gibt's da? Oh, Ressourcen. Okay, gut. So, okay, liebe Leute. Dann würde ich sagen, machen wir jetzt an dieser Stelle erstmal einen kleinen Cut. Beim nächsten Mal geht's ja weiter mit FGO. Und dann schauen wir mal, dass wir zur nächsten Hauptquest kommen. Bis zum nächsten Mal. Vielen Dank fürs Zuschauen.